The bipartisan Senate Select Committee on Healthcare Consumer Access and Affordability has been meeting throughout the interim to discover ways to make Minnesota healthcare more affordable. As lawmakers prepare for the upcoming 2018 session, the chair of the committee, Senator Scott Jensen, joins me in the studio to talk about some possible recommendations. Welcome. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate it. Your committee has met, I counted eight times, maybe more, maybe less, somewhere in there, since July, and you've covered a broad range of topics. From your perspective as a physician, what have you learned that has surprised you the most? I think that we have a tendency to nibble at the edges, and uh, I think the problem is so vast and so many tentacles that it's really hard to get people to think transformatively. If we keep doing what we've always done, we're probably going to get what we've always got. And I'm hoping that this committee that Senator Gazalka had championed can perhaps push the envelope open and let's talk about how do we transform the system. And I think one of the things we tend to do is we, we sort of start, well, what should we do right here? And I think the wise man begins at the end while the fool ends at the beginning. We need to ask ourselves, what do we want this to look like at the end? And then we need to have that bipartisan discussion and get it together. Uh, having one party jam it through, or, and then in the two years or four years later, they flip and they, a, a different party jams it through. I don't want to do that. So that's been a big surprise. Is it's just so difficult to transform the way things have been done. Well, and it seems to me that because it is such a large problem, you know, you tackle something over here, and then there's unintended consequences over here, and everything is constantly shifting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. your idea of, of complete transformation, how do you begin that conversation on a bipartisan level? Well, one thing we have to do is we have to get rid of the, the hot buttons, the lightning rods. There are some words that just don't allow people to have dialogue. And so we have to try to not use those words because then everybody gets distracted. What are some examples of words? Well, I think in, in a mandate. I, I think mandate, I had a couple of uh, commentaries in the Minneapolis Tribune. And uh, a mandate doesn't necessarily have to have a financial penalty associated with it. A mandate might have the consequence being that if you do apply for insurance, that there's a six month waiting period. Uh, to make certain that you weren't free riding and holding off on a medical problem that needed attention, but you just decided to wait or you didn't know about needing it until uh, such and such a time. It's sort of like if you're not going to buy flood insurance until water's at your doorstep, then should you be able to make a quick phone call and say, by the way, I'd like flood insurance? So that is an issue. And so a mandate is one way to address that. But that's a hot button. So I think it's better to talk about incentives. But even better than that is what do we want to look like at the end of the day? Do we want every Minnesotan covered with a basic package of critical care coverage? If that's where we want to end with, then let's start there and back it up. And let's see how we get that done. We have a pretty robust public-private partnership in Minnesota. We've worked well together. Democrats and Republicans have both contributed to that. I don't think there's any reason to change that. So I'll absolutely say I'm not in favor of single payer. I don't think that's the way to go. We're not going to get where we want to go. But I do think having everybody covered is a worthy goal and I think it's achievable. That's an interesting point that you make because many of my questions are on specific areas mm -hmm. and, and that maybe is part of the old school way of looking at it where you look at this mm -hmm. and that and the other thing. But I do want to ask you about a couple of those areas. For example, your committee looked at the increasing cost of prescription drugs. In fact, Minnesota's Attorney General is in jo joining with 46 other Attorney Generals alleging price fixing among gen generic drugs. The cost of prescriptions is part of the problem at a state policy level. Do you have some ideas? Do you have some thoughts on that? Shannon, you're absolutely right to sort of rein me in and say, let's focus on what the committee's been focused on, because our committee is all about cost. There will be lots more discussions on health care, but let's focus on cost. Pharmaceuticals, clearly low-hanging fruit. I've got a file here of bills that we're going to talk about at our uh, meeting today. But price transparency is huge. That's, that's one. We have to go with price transparency. People need to know what the top 25 medications cost, if nothing more, just a cash price. We need to remove the gag order. We can't let PBMs tell local pharmacists that the local pharmacist doesn't have the right to tell a patient, you know, if you just skip using your insurance card here, it's going to cost you $8. But if you use your insurance card, it's going to be $40. We've got clawbacks in there where a, a copay for a drug might be $30 and the pharmacist collects the $30. But then the PBM comes in and says the 12 of that is ours. Patients have no clue on that. In terms of price setting and when a new product comes out, does it make sense that a new product is going to come in at three quarters of a million dollars per the first year? 
I met with a constituent not too long ago, and his daughter has a medical problem, and she's never been able to walk. But there's a new medication that will give her a chance to walk. It is an orphan drug. It's a very select drug. But the bottom line is, it might help this young lady walk, and I think she's like eight years old. The initial thought was that it was going to be somewhere around $250,000 a year. When the drug was released, for whatever reason, the pharmaceutical company decided that it was going to be $750,000, not two hundred and fifty. dollars When we get to numbers like that, there's no sanity in it. So how do we deal with that? So if we need to have some sort of a regulatory rate commission, almost parallel to our public utility commission, so be it. What we have is a pharmaceutical industry that has demonstrated time and time again that they're willing to charge what the market will bear. And the market will bear a lot because you're talking about someone's life, someone's health. So we need to do that. Generic drugs, when they pop up, an EpiPen goes from 50 bucks to 600 bucks. what's that about? A regulatory rate commission could pull that in and say, you have to justify any increase greater than 20%, and you have to get that work to the attorney general. They'll look it over, and if they're satisfied, cool. If they're not, then we're going to go deeper. I think we need to do things like that. But that's transformative thinking. A lot of Republicans aren't going to like the idea of regulation. But I think some of us are changing. Some of us are saying, well, maybe it is time for that. So those are some things we're thinking about there. Low value services. <laughs> we saw an article yesterday in the medical journals and then an article today in the, in the mainstream media about uh, Donald Trump's uh, physical. Mm -hmm. And they're commenting. He apparently did very well. Yeah, I, that's what the first article said. But now we've got some cardiologist from some other place sort of you know, taking a pot shot at him saying that, my stars, you know, uh, President Trump's in bad health because his coronary artery calcification score was off. Well, that's a test that we don't even know the validity of it. And, and so that's an example of a low value test absolutely. that many people are getting that don't necessarily provide valuable information. I want to get your thoughts on one other thing before we have to go. There's a separate task force looking at the shortage of home health care workers. And I'm just wondering with baby boomers aging and retiring and needing more care, is that another part of this problem, this question? Is this a crisis also in Minnesota? Absolutely. When we talk about five to 10,000 Minnesotans having very complex medical problems and, and very high costs every year, if we're going to transform the way we take care of those folks, it's not going to become by, well, we'll give you these things and you can't have these. Things. It's going to be a better team effort. And the home health care folks are going to oftentimes be the people in the trenches doing the work. Mm -hmm. If we can connect those folks with the primary care doc who's going to advocate for that patient, and if we can start putting together a team so that we're not having that patient at 2 in the morning buzz off to the emergency room, spend a couple days in the hospital, and do that five or six times a year. We've got a significant number of Minnesotans that uh, spend more than $100,000 every year, year in, year out. The only way we're going to change that is having more attention given to what the home health care folks are doing. We've got to pay more than $11 an hour. We've got to address the work shortage. If we don't, all we're doing is just talking the talk, and we're not willing to walk the walk. That's where we have to go. We've got to get at those kinds of issues. That's a huge piece. Senator Jensen, your leadership on this issue is remarkable, and I want to thank you for your time today. Well, thank you. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate it.